All right, I'm late, let's go. Uh, so that's me. Uh, I'm working at Canonical packaging uh, LibreOffice for Ubuntu. And also uh, I'm in the board of directors for the Document Foundation. And well, let's go back to 2010 because uh, that, that was when the whole thing started with the new build system, new back then. And uh, I wanted to just just uh, have a look at what we thought we would do back then and how, uh, how we thought we could improve stuff back then and what we actually achieved from that. So, yeah, that was one of the original slides from uh, the Open Office Conference in 2010, except that it didn't have this branding, but... <coughs> um, <laughs> And, uh, well, that was the goal back then. And for the most part, I think we, we achieved that. Um, but it, it, it might not look like that if you're building LibreOffice now, but you have to think about how, how uh, OpenOffice was building at that time. And there were many, many things that were broken there. There were... Um, manual dependencies, there were incomplete dependencies, there were incompatible builds, which means that you could build one part and uh, you had to know which part would change if you changed that and if you didn't, horrible things would happen and all kinds of other issues. So those were the goals we had back then. Uh, actually, I thought by now we would all use 32 core machines and uh, but that didn't happen. By now we just use all uh, very nifty laptops. Um, but uh, the other things uh, still are true and are things that we um, very much profit from now. And if you, if you use LibreOffice now and think, well, LibreOffice is still slow, um, that was the comparison from just building a few modules. Um, that was back then, and it's pretty much the same like that now, except that we almost take as much for a standard, standard run of these modules because we run all the tests by default all the time, or lots of them. Um, so we got a lot faster, and then we added a lots of tests that you can't disable, so that we are, <laughs> we are back uh, as slow as, as we were before, unless you know how to trick around that, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so um, one other goal of this was to not repeat yourself. One other goal of this was to not repeat yourself, because repeating yourself is, is stupid, and uh, especially if you're in the build system, you have multiple things that tell you how to build something. There can, again, be in inconsistencies and stuff that can create issues. Um, for comparison, this is how it is in LibreOffice right now. You register, and you, if you want to have a new library there, you put it somewhere which says in the registry, a uh, repository MK, which essentially says where it should end up in the final build. And, well, then you say how to build it. Like, uh, I want to build these C++ files. In the old open office world, well, it was a bit different. So um, that was one of the issues we had with the old stuff. The other thing was Timtoff TDI, so there's more than one way to do it. And, uh, well, that's always a bad thing because you have to know all of them to, to read, actually, what others are doing. And again, by, by now, if you want to, for example, export a symbol in LibreOffice, you do something simple like this. Uh, you add something DLL public to the declaration, and then the symbol is exported in open office, mm, yeah. Uh, you could have multiple ways to do that, and every one uh, would uh, cause interesting, different, slightly different effects. So again, it was troublesome. Um, oops, same slide. 
So this, this was the uh, initial implementation of the back then new build system where we had all these targets in one huge dependency tree and that meant that we, we were aware of all the stuff that was happening in, in all the build. We didn't have like these horizon effects where you would do an incompatible build which uh, meant you build something and said I'm pretty sure this is binary compatible with the rest and uh, trust me. And it actually knew if it was binary compatible or not. And most of the stuff, so the core stuff of this is still like that today. Uh, a few things changed like uh, the backwards compatibility uh, is gone. We, we don't need like to deliver and copy stuff five times around. We needed to do that in the old open office build system to be compatible with the old build system. So uh, thanks to all these guys who helped contributing to this. Um, the important quote here is, uh, I say we take off and nuke the entire site from orbit, it's the only way to be sure. That was uh, the, the last comment when we killed the last part of the old build system. Uh, so that needed to be in the commit message there. So with this, we had the, com the whole build system on uh, essentially on one build system and not like we had before, two or rather three, like the old one, the new one, and the one that mixed everything be uh, between those, which was some uh, ugly pearl hackery. Uh, and then I got bored and uh, I wondered if I could do more than the stuff that I originally planned for the new build system. And one of the things was, well, actually syntax highlighting and using IDEs is a pretty good thing, but it's, it's um, hard to like manually tell your IDE where all the, the include paths are and things like that. On the other hand, well, we can't just say use Visual Studio and then we build everything with Visual Studio because that's kind of hard of Lin on Linux and on um, other platforms. So using just an IDE uh, as, as the main uh, build system doesn't work. But what we could do is have, a, have an, the normal cross-platform build that we had before and export solutions to different IDEs so they could be using um, this to give you uh, syntax highlighting, debugging, uh, and stuff like that. So the first I did was kdevelop because, well, it seemed to be easy to me. And again, as I said, that was not, not something that was initially planned. It was like uh, an afterthought. So uh, what it did was um, you, you did a make np, which prints out, out all the build information, and then it passed that and tried to build the uh, IDE solution from that. Turns out that something as simple as make np isn't really stable over different versions of make. So the parser for this turned to be, <laughs> it, it always added more stuff. And I looked at this, and this is not good. We are, we are, <laughs> we're taking more time to parse actually the info than, than is actually in there. And the result was always flaky, because people were using different versions of make, and uh, it was uh, kind of tricky to to uh, use this in a reliable way. And the goal of this was to have people who were new to development to get it on an IDE. And well, if the first thing they do is, is failing and they need a full build to get there, that's, that kind of sucks. So um, I now reorganized that and uh, did all the, the tricky stuff in the build system itself, and then it just dumps that in JSON so that a simple Python script can read that and uh, translate that to whatever IDE you want to have. So this is the solution right now, and I think it, it mostly is um, reliable. And um, we can look here. Right, there was a question from, where's Jan? Is Jan here? Nope. Uh, Jan asked me, well, 
I looked at the files and, and the, the compiler switches, oops, the, the wrong slide, um, that actually are given to, to compile a C++ file on, um, on Windows. And almost all the stuff, all the meta, uh, all the data about what definitions and flags and stuff are to be used for this target are in the JSON file, with a few exceptions, and this is what he was asking about. And that's uh, these few, uh, a few things still missing. Um, that is like generally uh, config specific stuff, like how, which flags to use for exceptions and stuff like that, which is not target specific. So. When he wrote this email, mm, should they have been in the JSON? I said, well, no, because they are configuration specific and they are the same for for the whole build. But maybe we should I should just drop a JSON file next to it, which which contains all this info, so that you can actually from the JSON file uh, find out all the flags that were used to build this on your specific platform. Um, so which IDEs do we have? Well, Ktevelop, that was me in the beginning. Uh, then uh, Honsa did Visual Studio, and Jan and others uh, did additions to that. Xcode was, I think, initially done by Tor, and then a lot of work by Jan. So we have like the major platform, uh, major IDEs for each platform being able to to uh, work on uh, LibreOffice code in the um, natish, natively feeling uh, environment. And we have Vim and you completely by Moggy for the old Unix guys who wouldn't use anything newer. Um, <laughs> and well, we have Qt Creator and actually um, one of the Qt Creator guys came up to me he can't attend this talk, but he said, well, I really want to help out, so we, uh, we, should, uh, we should get in contact with them and uh, get Qt Creator to be nicely integrated with that. Um, so the past was what, what I aimed to do with the original um, new build system eight years ago, and um, this IDE stuff is just like a, a nice additional feature and there were like the ideas to maybe after eight years we should again use a new build system <laughs> just cause and well I felt like the old Unix guy that said no not with me but there's this thing if you work too long on something that maybe maybe you're not entirely uh, well, neutral in, uh, on this. So um, when, I, when I said, well, you, you should never look at this, um, I looked, uh, the next thing I did was look actually how much of this build system was actually done by me. And hey, good news, although I wrote the original stuff, uh, there are other guys who do own a lot more lines of it by now than me, so it's, it's not mine anymore. Great. <coughs> David? Michael, congratulations, you own this thing now. <laughs> um, so again, and also the distribution of country, so this is the lines of code and who last touched them. And it's pretty even distributed and there are a lot of people touching lots of areas there. Um, so looking forward in, uh, to using something completely different these were the original problems we tried to solve with, with eight years ago when we did this. Some of the stuff creeped back in. I think cargo code programming is already in the make files is again on the rise because, well, it's been eight years and stuff collected in there. But in general, the other stuff uh, is mostly reached. And I would add one more thing, the two that I, that I spoke about. Uh, do not repeat yourself and um, don't do TimTof TDI. And that's one of the main arguments against something like let's let's use uh, Visual Studio directly and then like export that to somewhere else. Can you please explain TimTof TDI? 
Uh, there's more than one way to do, to do it. So um, again, I'm kind of reluctant to use something like Visual Studio Solutions directly and then have to maintain different uh, build systems on all platforms because that will always break and there's more than one truth to the build. So someone does something on Windows and then uh, he changed the solution files but not the stuff for the other platforms and stuff like that. So that, that uh, unless you find a way to synchronize all this, is really tricky. Um, the other challenges, so I think we, we should stay with, with something that is uh, one single uh, build system, whatever that is. And uh, well, the, the other stuff like uh, having auto-generated intermediates uh, who here uses AutoMake and AutoConf and loves it? <laughs> You're loving it? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, we gotta talk. <laughs> uh, the other stuff is, well, custom targets, like again, this is having more uh, custom stuff in, in the build targets, which is not like the usual cross platform stuff. And the degrees of freedom in. I have data points to add to your model. Oh, great. We, Later. We started a CI job to do random config and see you know, if they pass the config or in place. Right? You can build a thing by just random config. Uh -huh. And the last number is I run that once a day uh, you know, at night just for fun. And 79 failure, 11 success so far. Uh huh, right. <laughs> so. <laughs> We have way too much <laughs> uh, degrees of freedom in the configuration, especially on Windows, where there should be pretty much only one, mostly. And um, so we, uh, that's a goal, again, to, to get away from the build system. And that means, for example, well, the, the, the candidates for this are obviously CMake or uh, maybe use, use Scheme in, uh, in Make as a migration path. Uh, but the, the, the advantage there is uh, not to rewrite everything from scratch again, but to softly migrate to it. But the, the most interesting issue probably is uh, the build execution, because uh, Ninja is a lot faster than what we have now, because Make is just awfully slow parsing all the dependency files that we have, which are just huge. Yeah? Do a lot of those. Uh, yes, when you do a no up build, the, the speed of make is important. But when you build real thing all the time, what really matter today is not so much the build time, is the reminding problem with files and we do it. Yeah. Because we do have external that still run with minus J1 because they still mm -hmm. open and still can build power. Uh, and we have a lot of tests and some of them are really not balanced and they have a low tail. Spend quite a lot of time where we have only one core to four use of the 32 that you hope we have and we do have. Yeah. We don't really use them. So, right now, there is probably 30% of elapsed time that could be gained just by having the thing mm. in the back. I mostly agree, but I'm. Uh, I mean, I, I want to fight against my inner inner uh, feeling that everything is fine. So, yeah. But if I if I look at all these, if I look at all these things, probably Ninja is is uh, the first uh, most useful things of trying to uh, attack within these, rather than the others. Yes. So the externals are actually, uh, yeah, interesting. All right. Uh, anyone else but Norbert having questions? <laughs> yes. How much is actually GBuild uh, general, uh, generally usable for other software projects? How, how much LibreOffice specific? Well, there's. <laughs> It, it, there, there is somewhere deep inside is something that is generic usable, but uh, you, you will have trouble finding it if you're not knowing about LibreOffice because there are these things like these um, 
multiple layers of where to put libraries and stuff that we are actually not using that much anymore, but they are still in there. I think Miklos once did um, an experiment to just get the build system out of LibreOffice and then try to to uh, get rid of all the LibreOffice specific stuff. So it, it was just one huge build system that built Hello World. Um, yeah, but that's the part where unless you have something very complex and very big, uh, it's probably not worth the effort. Yeah. Also, there are lots of optimizations that you you probably only need if you're as big as LibreOffice, like pre-compiled headers and windows, uh, having all this parallelization and... Um, the, the library checks do not link against libraries that did not change the public API. Right. So stuff like that. And having, um, for example, you, um, uh, GCC creates the dependency files. Those are huge. They're too huge uh, to be just, um, well, normally you would just use all of them, pass all of them, and be fine. Well, that, that doesn't work for LibreOffice. So we are taking all these dependency files and pre-parsing them and uh, kicking out all the stuff that is actually uh, superficial and stuff like that. So if your project doesn't need 20 minutes on a 32-core machine, yeah, but then most people don't have a 32 core machine, and so the build still takes 20 minutes, but then... Right. Like so the you're absolutely invited to look into the stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's luckily not only me who, who knows about how, how this stuff works, which is good. And, uh, well, feel free to, to, to take a look at it. I'm looking forward for contributions. <laughs> If you build like 20 minutes on the one core and that's all you have, one core, 20 minutes, this is not going to help you because all it did was simplify how to run and parallelize it. We did a great progress in that compared to before. But it's really helping when you have actually a certain core to feed. The rest of it is not really speed. Yeah, the, uh, so again, in the comparison to the old build system, the most important thing was not even the speed. That was also important, but more important was getting rid of all the craft that was in the old stuff that okay. collected over 20 years. The speed we got out of that is that all of a sudden we could do a partial build. I mean, yeah. That worked. Uh, right. The partial build meaning that you touched one file and says it would do an incremental build and actually would work because that didn't work in the old open office build system. You would touch one file and everything would be broken most, most of the time. Okay, I think I'm over time already, yes. Thank you.